Delgott, Westcott's Chief Operating Officer, and I'm here with Mark McCarran, Westcott's Chief Investment Officer. Great to see you, Mark. Good to see you, Carrie. Mark, a few weeks ago, we talked about the themes we were seeing for 2021. We had highlighted the reopening of those sectors of the economy, which were most impacted by the pandemic, fiscal and monetary stimulus, increased discretionary spending, and the return to work for many who had lost their jobs. Investors seem to have gone from worrying that the U.S. economy was headed for a recession to worrying that it's growing too quickly. And this partnered with the fact that our country has taken on such a significant amount of debt has resulted in rising expectations of inflation. So can you start us off today by providing some historical perspective? Because interestingly, we haven't experienced an inflationary high interest rate environment in quite some time. Yeah, I think that's a very good point, Carrie. And, and the future uh, may be too bright. You know, the fact is that the investor sentiment has changed so much. But before we talk about really today, we want to get first talk a little bit about you know inflation, what it is, and uh, some historical context. So the first is consumer price index. These are the things that measure price changes up or down. They're based on things like you know, prices for food, clothing, shelter, fuels, those types of things. And the measurement, you know, over history shows that, you know, during certain periods of time, certain economic environments, uh, prices are falling, typically during recessions, and prices typically rise during expansions. And we have two measures of that on this chart. The orange line is actually a, a measure of the broadest measure of inflation. Uh, often called headline inflation. You can see that orange line moving over the years, but the highest point it reached was back in March of 2008. Um, and then the, the lowest it reached was in March of 2009, and that was during the financial crisis 10 years ago. We'll get into that in a moment. The blue line is actually the same figure, the same measurement, but it takes out the most volatile components like food and energy. And as you just said, the blue line shows that inflation has been running at or below 2%, which is not very large, not very big, uh, for the last 10 years. So we really haven't faced inflation fears in the market for quite some time. And that's kept interest rates low, encouraged borrowing. Like you said, the U.S. government's borrowing, businesses are borrowing, and homeowners are borrowing because rates have been low. The challenge with that, it has not really rewarded savers, you know, those investors looking for yield. So a quick history, in about 10 years ago, there was the same fear of inflation. This is after the, the financial crisis, markets fell dramatically, house prices fell dramatically, and what the government did is stepped in with rescue packages similar to what they're doing today. And the monetary policy set by the Fed became very accommodative. What that means is that they cut rates and they also bought a lot of bonds to put liquidity into the market. The fears for clients about 10 years ago was, isn't that too much? Isn't that inflationary? Well, the fact is the last 10 years show that those, those policies didn't really drive inflation. There's a couple of reasons for that. The, the recovery the last 10 years was the longest on record but it was the slowest, one of the slowest. And, um, and that really made you know, a difference because prices didn't spike up like people expected them to, um, and as it did perhaps in, in history back in the 70s and the 80s. So coming out of the last recession, the economy didn't rebound quickly and overheat with inflation leveling out just under 2%. What do you expect with this recovery? Yeah, you know, it's always dangerous, I guess, to look backward and, and move, you know, forward with those same assumptions. But a couple of things, first and foremost, is number one, um, we do recognize that the, the fiscal policy uh, today is much bigger than it was back 10 years ago. And the monetary policy, again, by the Federal Reserve and keeping rates low and buying bonds as they are today at a much bigger broader scale than they did 10 years ago, 
that could in fact lead to shorter term temporary inflation. Uh, so we do see inflation picking up now and could go even higher. Uh, I think the Fed wants it to go higher, to be very honest, because we've been in such a low inflationary period the last 10 years. But we are still not fully recovered. Uh, there's a long way to go. The economy is not working at full capacity. And until it does, I don't see inflation becoming a major issue or a sustained issue for our clients. Mark, you've talked to us about how Westcott's portfolios are positioned well to benefit from a recovery environment, but I'm sure many of our clients are wondering how our portfolios are positioned to perform if the recovery leads to higher inflation, even if it's not a sustained con concern of ours. Yeah, so the, the Westcott portfolios are positioned, uh, I think, to benefit well in the recovery environment. And there's a couple of reasons for that. Um, First, rising prices um, tend to support you know, areas of the economy like commodities, cyclicals, financials. Higher interest rates also are positives for those sectors. Um, and non-US markets tend to have a little bit more exposure to those sectors. So stock markets outside the US typically do a bit better in inflationary environments. Um, and that's when the US dollar is weakening at the same time. I talked about financials and cyclicals, and they tend to hold up better during periods of inflation. The fact is that Westcott has a modest overweight to value stocks, um, and we maintain a strategic allocation to non-US markets. Uh, and those things together help, are helpful in a rising inflationary environment. And um, the other thing I would say is that we have strategic allocations to real assets, through our exposure to real estate via real estate investment trusts, and also gold, both of which are talked about as a good inflation hedge. And we see you know, evidence of that historically and already this short period of time as inflation has started to pick up. The final thing I would say is that bond markets are probably the most susceptible to inflation risk, uh, but we've mitigated some of that risk by keeping our Exposure to bonds on the short side, meaning shorter maturity bonds have less interest rate sensitivity and less inflation risk as a result. Thanks, Mark. We've covered a lot of ground today with both the historical context and current perspective on inflation, and then how Westcott's portfolios are positioned to perform well in a potentially higher inflation environment. As always, please don't hesitate to reach out to Mark or your advisor with any questions, and thank you for your trust in Westcott. Thank you very much.